Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today I want to talk about this image of Andromeda captured with LRGB plus HA data. And we'll process it in PixInsight and Photoshop. And we'll also apply continuum subtraction to the HA channel. <music> Okay, so let's look at this image just a little bit before we jump in. As I mentioned, it's a, an LRGB image, uh, meaning that I have luminance frames plus red, green, and blue for color. And then I also captured HA data, and you can see there's quite a bit of the uh, red nebulosity showing uh, in the galaxy. And I used a process called continuum subtraction to help separate the hydrogen from kind of the general uh, red glow in the galaxy. And we'll talk about how to do that in Photoshop as we go through. This data was captured last night uh, with this telescope. This is a 16-inch DREAM uh, astrograph, and it's a fast Newtonian. It's f3.75, and you can't see the camera. It's in its park position here, but the camera is an FLI 16803 camera uh, with a five position uh, LRGB HA filter wheel. And actually this uh, system we just recently acquired and it's available for rent for uh, one month or longer periods uh, as a complete system and that includes the, uh, the rental for the location. But let's jump over into PixInsight and talk about the processing. So in PixInsight, uh, I always start, the first thing is to go through uh, image inspection and blank. And what I do there is just quickly step through the images. So I would you know, start at the top. And once you've selected something over here on the right, you can use the cursor keys to just move through an image at a time. And I'm just looking for uh, any large errors, clouds, you know, some sort of a problem. And if there is a problem, I'll pull that, that sub out of the folder and put it somewhere else. And I do that by using this uh, move selected file to a new location. So if I wanted, for instance, to pull this one out, I would click on the uh, move file to new location and move it to a separate folder called rejects. And then eventually I would delete everything in the rejects file. These all looked good. Uh, these are a combination of five minute subs for the uh, LRGB and 10 minute subs for the HA and that was all done unguided. So next we go into the uh, WBPP script and you know they just keep making this script better and better with each iteration but it is uh, it, it really makes the whole uh, PixInsight process pretty painless. Uh, I've already got this configured, and in fact, it, it's already been executed. But uh, basically, I like to load my light frames first. Uh, and they're all here, and you can see PixInsight just automatically separates them out by filter and by time. And then the flats, darks, and biases, I just keep in a, um, a library folder. So those, in fact, I load those just by loading an entire directory of calibration frames. On the calibration tab, uh, I generally will set a pedestal of 300 and apply that to all light frames. And you'll notice that on the, uh, I don't actually have a dark set for 600 seconds, but I do have 300 seconds. So to correct for that, I select the uh, HA subs. And over here in the middle, uh, I just click on Optimize Master Dark. If I don't, you'll see there's a little bit of a warning there. Uh, click on Optimize Master Dark, and that's good to go. And the last thing I would mention, because this is a CCD camera, I have selected Linear Defect cor Correction. So once this is ready, uh, and just for in, this is 2 hours and 15 minutes of data. Uh, once this is all ready to go, I've got it configured for automatic registration image selection, and it's going to save it in a... Uh, a folder where I have all of my PixInsight swap files. Uh, and that, that's a temporary folder as well. 
it'll go into a folder called Andromeda. Just click on Run and it will take off and do its thing. When it's done, uh, if you double click on the background, you can open the files to look at them. And here you can see I'm on my Drive D, uh, PixInsight Files, Andromeda. This is the master folder. And here are the various master lights. Uh, you may also find master flats or other masters in here, but in this case, the master flats came from elsewhere. So this is just the master lights. So here's the L or the red, L, green, blue, HA, luminance, and so forth. What I typically do is start with the red, green, and blue. And so I'll open those three and just go to continuum subtraction and just quickly drop each of the red, green, and blue into the uh, corresponding channel in the channel combination tool. Execute that, and that will create a RGB image for us. And if we just throw a quick screen stretch on that, we can see that it looks fairly decent. Uh, I would run uh, a little bit of dynamic background extraction. There's a little bit of a gradient from the lower left to upper right because there was a, an almost full moon last night. Uh, and then also I use the uh, spectrophotometric color calibration. Uh, I would run uh, Russ Croman's Blur Exterminator. Uh, I stretch the image generally just by using a uh, the STF screen transfer function tool and then actually apply that with the histogram tool and then lastly apply Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator and that gives me this starless color image of the uh, galaxy and also a separate file of just the stars. And then I also will run the luminance and the uh, HA through the same process. So here is the HA after subtracting the stars. And you can see very distinct HA regions, uh, especially around the kind of the outside or the, the middle of the galaxy. The luminance is going to give us the most detail. So we're going to use this for the detail of the galaxy and we'll use this for the color of the galaxy. And of course we'll use the stars for the stars. The last thing I do is go back and get just the red file and run it through the same process. And this creates a, uh, a nonlinear starless version of just the red filter. And we're going to use this to do our continuum subtraction to basically subtract the general red from the specific HA red to get a, a more focused uh, HA set of data. These are all saved as 16-bit TIFF files and with that we'll jump back into Photoshop and if you've watched my videos before you know that I'll start by going to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack and that brings up this dialog box where you choose the files that you want to load into a stack. I'll choose Browse and just navigate to my um, folder where I saved the 16-bit TIFFs. And they're right here. So you just select all five of those, open, and then now that they're in the list, now I can say OK. Photoshop will go through and load each one of these files as a distinct layer with each file being its own layer. So the first thing we need to do is just some general housekeeping. And you never know for sure what order the files are going to come in. In this case, the RGB image is on top. So the basic housekeeping is I want to put that in its own group. And I use the keyboard shortcut Control G on Windows or Command G on a Mac. And then rename the group. Uh, I'll just name it RGB. And then close the group turn it off. There's the stars. Again, drop it into a group. Name it stars. And close the group. Turn it off. But I'm also going to go ahead and drag this up to the very top of the layer stack. So we have our stars on top, then our color layer. Next, it looks like we have the luminosity. Control G. I'll name this luminosity. Close it. Turn it off. 
uh, here is our red and here is our HA. And so the red is the one we're going to use for continuum subtraction. So I'll select both of those and control G to put those into a group and label it HA. Now to actually do the continuum subtraction, basically what we're going to do is subtract this red image from the HA image. And we do that by using a uh, blending mode. The box that says normal, when you open that up, you'll see that we have all these different blending modes to choose from. And the one we want is subtract. And you'll notice as soon as we choose subtract, most of that image disappears, except for you can kind of faintly see the, uh, those hydrogen nebulae within the galaxy. So I want to adjust how much I'm subtracting. I'm going to do that by adding a levels adjustment layer. And then I'm going to select from this icon at the left of the properties panel to clip this adjustment layer to just the layer below it so that the levels adjustment is only affecting this layer and not the layer below. And by adjusting the brightness of the thing we're subtracting, we can fine tune the subtraction so that it's really focused just on those HA layers. And then we may wind up wanting to add another levels adjustment layer just to adjust the result of the continuum subtraction. And let's say it's something like that. And I'm, operating a little bit blind here because we're working from the bottom back up, but we'll just say this is going to be a good starting point. So for now, let's put together the rest of the image. I'll turn on the luminosity layer. And because this is in a group, I can add a levels adjustment layer and fine tune the brightness of what's going to become the, the overall detail of what's in the galaxy. Next, I'll turn on the RGB, and this I really want to just contribute color. So again, we're going to go back to our blending modes, and I'm going to change this from pass-through to color. So this RGB layer is adding only color to the image. The layer below it is adding only luminosity. So if I turn this color layer off, you can see the color goes away. It's very low level of saturation. If, if we want to increase the saturation, I can add a hue saturation adjustment level layer within this layer group and boost the saturation. So there it is without color, and there it is with the additional color. Uh, we can turn the stars on or off. Uh, the stars right now are in normal or pass-through mode. When we extracted the stars with Star Exterminator, uh, I chose the unscreen stars option. So the proper blending mode to put these back would be screen. And that puts the stars back basically the same way they came out. And then the last thing we want to do is add this HA. And I'm, just to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and close the groups or collapse the groups. And I want to drag this HA layer up above the RGB layer. And you'll see how the it, you get a blue, either a blue outline box or a blue line. And we want to drop this between the RGB and the star layer. So we want it to turn into a blue line. Release it. And so now we have the HA layer here. And we want to do two things. We want the HA to only contribute red. And we want it to brighten what's below. So first we're going to go to the advanced blending options, which you can get to by going to layer, uh, layer style, blending options, and that brings up this dialog box and you'll notice that because this is an RGB image here in the center, we see check boxes for each channel, red, green, and blue. So we'll just turn off the channels that we don't want. So now this layer is contributing only red, uh, but it's contributing red in both brightness, you know, making it brighter and darker. So any place it's brighter than what's below, we see red. Any place it's darker, it's subtracting red, which is why everything turns cyan. 
what we really want to do is just add the red to it. And we'll do that by changing the blending mode. And we can change it either here or through this other drop down that we used earlier. If I change this to screen blending mode and then click OK. Now, if I turn that layer off and on, you can see it's really just enhancing the HA regions without affecting anything else. And we focused it by using the continuum subtraction so that it's not affecting the hydrogen in the core or elsewhere in the image. And if we want to fine tune that, we still have this levels adjustment layer. If we want to brighten the, the red a little bit more, at this point, it's a matter of just kind of adjusting you know, the intensity of that red to whatever level you want. Um, and then we also have a, an overall levels adjustment back here for the overall brightness of the uh, image. So kind of in a nutshell, that's the, uh, the simple process of creating an LRGB plus HA image uh, using a combination of PixInsight to prepare these TIFF files and then Photoshop to very quickly and visually uh, put these together and adjust them to taste. Uh, it's a very fast way of processing your astro images. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you like videos like this, obviously, uh, I would encourage you to like or, and or subscribe to the channel to be notified of new videos. And with that, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.